course of making this video, I came to understand that I might have something in common with young people. Generation Z or Zoomers, my grandkids' generation. Now this imagined commonality that I think that I see between myself and, and young people has to do with the type of person, the type of Western expat that might find themselves retired comfortably in Bangkok. You see, I'm a city boy. I grew up in New York City. That's my hometown. And I, I, I love a busy place. I love, you know, the, the activity, the, 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 the feel, the tension, the, the vibe of an urban kind of place. And, and I'm happy here in Bangkok with all that. Now, don't get me wrong. I love to visit the country or the beach. You know, it, it, it's, it's wonderful to, to find yourself relaxing in a pastoral environment. Yeah, I like that for about three days. <laughs> and then I get kind of antsy. <laughs> what started me thinking about young people is when I was kind of noodling around on the internet uh, while I was putting this video together, I noticed a couple of posts that were critical of young people of Generation Z, calling them fragile and lazy and they'll never amount to anything, that kind of silliness. And the funniest post that I saw was on X and it was from the actor Sylvester Stallone, whom I admire, by the way. Sylvester is, is just about my age. I think we're the, we're the same age. And he's in great shape. The guy's in good shape. He looks good. He's taking care of himself. And he's a successful Hollywood actor. I mean, how cool is that? That's, you know, that's a hell of an accomplishment. But what he was doing is he had a pair of boxing gloves and he was talking about how much more lethal boxing gloves were back in the day when he made the movie Rocky. And he was using that as kind of an analogy for how much more difficult life was back then. For, for him and people his age and how that young people, you know, didn't understand the difficulties of life and that kind of thing. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at this. First of all, I'm thinking he's never been in a real boxing match in his life. He's an actor and he's my age. You know, I grew up in the same era he did and I'm like, where did he live? You know, it, it's like once the Vietnam War ended, we did not have it bad at all. And you have to remember, you know, the boomer zeitgeist was something like sex, drugs, and rock and roll, live fast, die young, leave a good looking corpse. And I know a few people that actually did that. So yeah, I, I like what kind of values is he holding up for this new generation? And besides, what he was saying in these other critics of young people didn't match up with my experience, not at all. I know a few young people and they're crushing it. Three months ago, my grandson, Jim, 22 years old, visited me here in Thailand. My grandson, Jim here, has showed up with his uh, couple of his buddies and we're having a Thai immersion night. Jim and his three friends and business partners were scouting out uh, locations in Asia, mostly in the Philippines, uh, where they were recruiting people for their business. They have an online marketing business and the three of the four of them had met in college where they were studying mathematics and computer science. And after the first year, they dropped out of college because they weren't learning what they wanted to learn. They knew that they could learn what they wanted to learn online for free. And they had very definite business plans. And over the last 18 months, they've created quite a successful business. So much so that here it is three months later, and they haven't gone back to the States yet. They've been traveling around the world. They've been through Europe. And currently the last time I saw Jim was a picture of him on Instagram on the back of a yacht off the coast of Tulum, Mexico. They stay in high-end Airbnbs and do their business on their laptops. These are some pretty ambitious, smart, and successful young people. Here in Thailand, I know Sai Sai. Sai Sai has modeled for me on a number of occasions. She's the niece of my former girlfriend. And Sai Sai has just completed her coursework to become a doctor of veterinary studying, study, doctor of veterinary studies. She's currently doing her internship. So she's, uh, she's a doctor. Uh, Aoi, 
is a barista, works next door to where I live here in Starbucks. During Songkran, which is the Thai New Year, that's in April, uh, she was all dressed up in this really cute outfit with pigtails and I asked her if I could take her picture and she's such a charming lass, she was sure, so I put this picture up. And when last week I went looking for, uh, for young people to talk to about the video I was making here, uh, I, I asked her and she didn't have time to make the video. She works five days a week in Starbucks on weekends. She goes to school where she's studying business and marketing. I did get a little bit of a clip in from her. You work here how many days? Uh, I work here um, five days. Five days? Yes. And then one day you go to school? Yes, and I go to school and one day I take a break at, at my home. Yeah, you're very busy. Yes. Very busy. Yeah, that's what my video is about. Young people are working very hard these days. Yes, because uh, when I'm open, when the university open, I don't have time to work. Uh -huh. When I'm cold, when I uh, get university cold, I come to work because I want money to shopping my coat, my shoes, about that. You will make the clothes and shoes look good. And then there's pond. Pan is 22 as well. She is completing her college studies in a few weeks. And she's studying digital media production, which they do very well here in Thailand. That's a, that's a, a field here in Thailand where they, 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 produce, they produce good stuff. It's something that I've noticed for years here. They do good uh, video stuff, di digital imagery stuff. And uh, Pan is working as a server. That's where I met her. and I. Uh, I, I told her that she would make a good model, which she laughed at and ignored me. But over time, she got to know me a little bit. And, um, and that's what we're doing. We're doing a little bit of a co collaboration in this video. She was the model for the thumbnail. <laughs> so, so, you know, that's just an example of, uh, of a few people who, uh, who are Zoomers and are working hard. And I think that there's a reason for that. I, I think that the reason behind what I'm seeing as an, amb an ambition on the part of young people, sometimes to their detriment, because all of the people that I just mentioned aren't really interested in having a relationship or starting a family. They want to get out and do something important and meaningful and make some money and build a foundation for their future and the future of their, their, their families. And... Uh, I, I think that's a result of all the lockdowns. All of these young people came to a point where everything stopped while they were in college and started, you know, going to school online, doing everything online. They were staying in, sequestered in their rooms with a computer, and they've emerged out of that. And I think we have this post-plague kind of ambition that they're a part of. And the more I look, the more I'm seeing it amongst people of their generation. And I'm gonna tell you how that relates to Bangkok. It was May of 2020 when I first heard the word reset used as a, a metaphor for using the pandemic disaster as an economic and social opportunity to change things. And I didn't hear it from Klaus Schwab, the uh, leader, the elitist leader of the World Economic Forum who has become famous for it, I heard it from the Thailand Minister of Tourism. Now at the time, the Thai Minister of Tourism said that, used the pandemic as a, as a reset opportunity, Northern Italy's uh, medical infrastructure was nearly overwhelmed. Jamaica Hospital in Queens, New York, was using refrigerator trucks to store corpses. Thailand people are very uh, sensitive to propriety. They're very polite. They don't like to insult people. So the Thai ministers, you know, pronounce the proclamations went over very poorly, and he never said it again. But since then. Thailand has been moving in a direction where that really supports the idea 
of a reset because of that disaster. I came here to this place to uh, start shooting this segment of the video. This is a true digital park, and this was a little bit more than a small shopping mall and a big hole in the ground uh, in the spring of 2020. Now it's this giant complex of uh, apartments, condos, which are, you can see the tops of them up there. This, this business complex by True Digital. True Digital is a telecommunications corporation. I, I'm using them on the phone. I use their 4G and their internet. And uh, they're pretty good. They envision themselves as a Thailand Google. And they built this giant complex. It, it, it has all pretty much opened up since the pandemic. <laughs> You know, in that time, they, they, they used the opportunity of the shutdowns to, to move ahead vigorously. And they built this big giant complex. And this is only one example of many here in Thailand that has you know, emerged out of uh, all of those lockdowns with a fierce determination to be out in front of the pack as new development occurs. Uh, very much like those, those youngsters I was talking about in the first half of this video. <laughs> in recent years, Thailand has tripled the size of the rail system, the transit rail system here in Bangkok. Eastern Economic Corridor is a development initiative that has been building rail systems, uh, improving airports, and, and developing the ports all to, uh, all to promote more exports. The, uh, uh, they're building a, a, a cruise ship pier in Bali Hai Pattaya. That was formerly one of the world's largest entertainment zones. Entertainment zone is a Thai euphemism for a cluster of bars and poorhouses. <laughs> Thailand has always, or in recent decades, been a, a manufacturer of auto parts, an exporter of auto parts. Well, now they're going full speed ahead into the development of, uh, of parts for an assembly of electric vehicles. Tesla is building a factory here. And just as kind of an amusing anecdote to all of that, in any one of the countless number of uh, condominium high-rises that are being developed here, you can very easily find one of these spots as Thailand has legalized the sale of marijuana. So yeah, you can pretty much find whatever you want here. And the point of all this is that Bangkok or the region around Bangkok and the region around Bangkok has become a hub of, of development and forward thinking business people and active young people all looking to take advantage of that kind of environment. Now, where does, how does that affect old guys like me? Well, I like that. I kind of did the same thing as the young people when I got stuck in, in the lockdowns, I stayed here in Bangkok and I started doing digital stuff. I, I'm a writer and I, I post on Quora.com and there are others. You can go, go ahead, go ahead. That's, I can edit stuff out easily. <laughs> That's, Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I'm a writer. I post stuff on, on, uh, on Quora.com. I post uh, photography written articles and my videos all on X, Elon Musk's uh, new Twitter, and uh, and of course YouTube. And I'm monetized on all three of those platforms now, and I'm actually starting to make uh, a little bit of money. And uh, so that's motivated me, because what I intend to do with that, I don't really need the money, so I'm gonna take that money and put it back into my digital enterprise, hoping to increase the uh, the quality of the stuff that I'm making, and you know, and, spread the wealth you know employ a few people as well as, as i move forward with this stuff so thank you for all of those of, uh, of those of you who have signed on recently a lot of new uh, subscribers here so you know how does that fit fit in with expats if you're kind of the retired expat like me that wants to be busy that has a little enterprise you want to go this is the perfect place for you you know come to bangkok you'll love it you know are you the kind of guy that wants to uh, stop working settle down rest in a hammock and find a nice young you know thai honey to take care of you or asian honey to take care of you well yeah, maybe you want to go to the philippines <laughs> It all depends. You know, there's a lot of uh, opportunity here in Southeast Asia. They're, in, they're coming out. They're, they're, you know, busting out of the, of the lockdown malaise, and they're doing it with gusto. 
Uh, I think that's happening globally, uh, but uh, Thailand in particular is making an effort to be out in front of all of that. The young people are on board, old guys like me are on board. <laughs> so if you want to get on board, come to Bangkok, get on board. It's great having you here. Thanks for signing on, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.